Ting! The new way everyone is getting their cell service. No overage penalties, great rates, keep what you do not use, no contracts, and someone will actually pick up the phone when you need support. Use our link and get $25 off your first month service or your new phone. Just go to tech-zen.tv slash ting to save $25. Hello, it's Monday night, and it's a few minutes after 9 p.m. on the East Coast. That means it's time for another Let's Make It. And this week, I think I'm going solo again. I'm letting the uh, Skype machine on in case Bob calls in, but his family emergency has been extended a little bit. And um, I haven't heard from him today to see how things are even going. So that I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but we wish him uh, the best, him and his family the best with all the stuff that's going on with them. So, uh, since we're not going to have the Rainbow Twino again probably this week, because, I mean, I know he's, I don't want to put any kind of pressure on him. I want him to take care of his family. That's the most important thing. Um, I have come back, and actually what I was going to talk about tonight, I kind of got sidetracked a little earlier today. As I've mentioned in the past, I'm working on this physical switcher, and I actually met with um, the people who are going to be doing the designing. And the, what I, the part that I was going to show you tonight, they kept so they could do some measurements with it to could figure out what kind of holes or anything need to be cut. So I do have other ones, and I tried. Actually, if you come over here, you can kind of see before 9 o'clock, I was trying to make another one, but um, I literally walked in here with this thing still warm in my hand at 9 o'clock, so I haven't had time to put it together. But what I was going to show you tonight are some smart buttons. And actually, that I have some more of those around here. I'm going to show you each one of those uh, that I'm kind of messing with. But this, this board will hold two of them, and I was going to show you one or two of them on here. Uh, the one they have has two on it, but I have another one sitting here. I just have a chance to get soldered. But um, I do have something else I wanted to show you that I did this past weekend, and it was one of those little project things where I think it would be kind of interesting to talk about as well. But I want to talk about some of the other parts that are going to go into the switcher, uh, and I'm going back here tomorrow with, uh, as well, so I'll take some of this stuff back with me tomorrow. Hopefully they're done measuring everything and get it all back. So anyways, this is just a smart button board, holds two smart buttons. And the way these two smart buttons work, it's through SPI, which means you have to tell it which one is the active one. So um, that's a subject for a different time. But uh, I do want to go through a few other things uh, today as as well. And I want to show you the project I made this past weekend. That is something I threw together on Saturday. Um, I don't have a script to take it apart and show you, but I can tell you what it is uh, for the most part. We'll walk through the code. It's something we talked about before, but it finally put into a practical use. So before we go too far, though, a while back, a few weeks ago, we mentioned about getting things, to doing electronic things for Halloween. Unfortunately, we haven't heard anything from anybody about the kind of fun projects you do for Halloween. So I still would like to see that. If, if you do something with electronics and, and, and it's Halloween, you know, take a video or picture of it and send it to us, and we'll make sure it comes on the show. So don't want you to forget about that, but nobody came up with any ideas for us to think things to work on. So this coming week, I am going to see if I can convince maybe my wife to cut out a pumpkin head for me and a few other things to do some things with electronics. And we'll, next couple weeks, maybe talk about some fun things to do for Halloween. I really don't participate much in Halloween normally, but I think it's going to be a fun fun project for things to do. Uh, and it would be good to put some things together. Again, if you have ideas, please let us know uh, if you have ideas for Halloween stuff. And if you do something, I'd like to put that on the show as well. You can send it to us and let's put it, put it on the show. A few housekeeping things. This show is recorded live every Monday at 9 p.m., except for last week. We didn't do it on Monday because uh, it was a last-minute thing with uh, Bob's emergency, and so we didn't do a show. I did it later in the week. So I'm sorry if you were here at 9 p.m. to watch us live. We just weren't here at 9 p.m. because we didn't have any content. And um, I was going to skip the week, but then I thought, well, I don't want to put an empty week in the schedule if I don't have to. So I did record it later in the week, and you can go back and you can watch that. But normally it's every Monday night at 9 p.m. right here at Texan TV. And you can normally you can come watch us live, and you can normally chat with us live. Except for tonight, something's wrong with the chat room, and I didn't realize that uh, until I get ready to start the show. So when I went to log into it, it just wouldn't let me log in. And my screen, I didn't know it was frozen. Like it was, I just figured nobody was on the last two shows and uh, it wasn't talking. So anyways, there is that. Also, if you want show notes from this show or any previous Let's Make It shows, you can go to techzen.tv or uh, you can also just go as a shortcut, go to letsmakeit.tv. It'll take you right to the right place inside of the Techzen TV website. Also, if you're on Facebook, you can follow us on our fan page, and we definitely appreciate if you go out there and click follow and spread the word a little bit about us. If it's uh, facebook.com slash techzentv, uh, and just, you know, as soon as you hit the like button, we try to get those likes, like counts up 
uh, more and more all the time. And if you use Twitter or at TechZen TV, or in, make sure you use the hashtag when talking about this show of pound sign, let's make it. And you can also subscribe to us on YouTube. So you go to youtube.com slash TechZenTV. Definitely appreciate you get subscribe out there if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, you can also get all of our downloads automatically and everything from many of the podcast directories, iTunes, Dogcatcher, whatever you use for what to watch in your podcast, plus one Roku and TiVo, and if a bunch of other places. Anywhere you can find us on a podcast, you can probably find us. And if you can't find us, let us know. We'll make sure that we show up there. All right, so all the housekeeping stuff is out of the way. All right, so first of all, let me talk about some of the parts that I are going to go into the switcher because there's a couple things that I haven't talked about before. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to show you uh, one of them. First of all, this is the project. We'll talk about this after the break. And so this is a T-bar control. Now, some people call this a joystick or a T-bar joystick. They're very hard to find, actually. Uh, if you go search on the internet the, by, the, by keywords, but this is one by APEM. Uh, there's a couple of companies that make them, but this is actually, it's very smooth and you, it has three pins. It has five volts, it has ground, and it has signal. The middle one there is signal. So it this is actually not a resistive. Uh, the best thing way I can explain that this works is uh, this is a, called a field effect. So basically it's a, it's a magnet going back and forth. There's a sensor in there that can tell how far away the magnet is. So by by moving that, so there's no actual uh, resistive tech, you know, technology inside of it. I'm not quite sure what they're doing to get the this pin out, but it acts exactly like a um, not an encoder, but the um, a rotor. Oh uh, yeah, a fader, like a regular fader. So um, it's it goes from zero to, to you basically 10k, and by moving it back and forth. And it, but it's all using the field effects. So it's all magnetic based and it's really, really smooth. Uh, I, I can't really demonstrate how smooth it's really soft and you just push it real lightly and it just goes. So this is a, a T-bar and it's using videos, video control surfaces to switch from one to the other. And uh, there are one control surface will have this in it. Our C200 product will have uh, one of these optionally in it and the C300 will have it on, you know, by default standard feature. Anyways, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to show you what that that is. Um, again, it is not easy to find. I had a hard time finding the first one and after I figured out what they were calling it, it made it a little bit easier to find the other ones. Uh, this company calls it a T-bar joystick, but switching for T-bar on the internet gets you a bunch of things, uh, not necessarily something that you're looking for. So we talked about rotary encoders before. This is a rotary encoder board. There's two of these on here. And uh, part of our wiring scheme, which I'll probably go back at some other point in the future and show you uh, the wiring scheme inside, the, inside the, the switcher because it really is one wire, uh, one bunch of wires that goes across and runs from board to board to board using SPI. And you can these, these two encoders are on the same SPI run. It's eight wires on a ribbon cable. Basically, it runs from you know place to place to place. So it's very clean inside, but this is a, a dual encoder board. You can see the encoders, these are basically push button encoders. So they go in the board uh, for tomorrow. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about this week, let me go ahead and get them out of the bags and everything here that I have, um, is these smart buttons. So these are from NKK. Now I have found other ones now. I'm trying to get some, some samples of them. And let me do here so I don't get them all mixed up. This is actually not the one we're going to use, <laughs> but very, very similar. Let me go here and I can show you, put this over here. And this is a smart button. So this is a LCD display. The background is two color. I think it's either red or green or a red and green combination, whatever you want to do. Um, I think it's like 64 different colors you can do with this particular one. <clears throat> But um, basically what it is, it's a little LCD display on top of a button. And it's a typical NKK button. It has a nice feel to it. You know, so NKK buttons are pretty nice. If you look on the bottom, you see these two pins right here. These two pins are the button contacts. And then on this other side, you see about, I think it's, is it nine? No, it's 11 pins on this side. So this one works a little differently than the one we're going to use. When we're going to use, actually, we talked through it through I2C or I'm sorry, SPI. This one is actually um, more closer to a shift register and how that and how it works. So you can have both these in series and you send the data down uh, 
the, the through the Siri where SPI I turn on a turn on a pin saying you're you're the active one, then I send you the data over SPI. So this is more like what we've talked about in the past of a shift register. Um, this is a 64 by 32, so you basically have 64 uh, dots by 32 dots. So you got to remember that when you're doing the shift register of where that data goes, it's um, a little bit more complicated, I think. You know, shift registers are pretty simple until you start adding up a bunch of these buttons together with 64 lines. Uh, I'm sorry, 64 dots by 32 lines. Uh, that adds up really quick to how much data you're sending across. But it's a really cool switch. It has a nice feel to it, and it's just a different way of interfacing with it. So that's that one. And let me go grab another one here. This is another one I don't think we're going to use either. Actually, okay, so let me explain this one. This one's actually not a button, but it is a display. And it's exactly the same ones we just had, but this is a little display only. There's no button attached to it. So this is what's on top of the button normally. But what we have here is just a physical display where you have it mounted above something and you can and do a display. Again, it's 64 by 32 dots, so you can do a little display. Uh, I believe the same backlighting as the other one as well. I think this is exactly the same as the one we just had out, except for it's a display only, no button attached to it. All right, so... And then I have two more smart buttons. One we're actually going to use, and then another one that I'm thinking about using on on our C300 switch, which is the higher end switch, or one of the higher end switches. Oh, you know what, sorry. I just realized I never showed this to you. <laughs> so there we go, that's what it is, that's the display. Same as the other button that we had. Just like that, and the bottom are all the, the pins that you can put at, uh, ribbon cable one or however you want to attach to it. Um, the one thing I'm not sure of is exactly how you would mount it. So I would almost think that to mount this, you'd probably have to build a board to snap it onto. So you, instead of using a ribbon cable, you would actually you know put this into um, some kind of plug on the board. So I haven't figured that part out. Um, I am looking at these as potential above each individual um, section or button to describe what the button is because on our larger boards, we want to make it more virtual so you can pretty much rearrange it uh, kind of on the fly. All right, so let me get the next one. And just so you know, these things are not very inexpensive. Uh, actually, they're not cheap either. They're built, they're built really nice. If you look at, look at cheap as being a, something how it's built, but they're built very nice. All right, so, and just to give you an idea, the first button I showed you, I think, think went for 50 some dollars a piece or something like that again not not super inexpensive all right so this is the one that we're going to use and you can see it's very similar to the very first one from the look at from the top uh, again you have multiple choices for colors on the back if you look in the back, you see two pins, and if you look at the rest of it, you see six pins, which is SPI. So you have uh, MOSI, MISO, uh, clock, and the four pins for, for uh, um, SPI, and then you have a select saying, I am the selected one, and then you also have your power and your ground, or something, there's one more pin left, if I can't remember what it is, and then these two are just contact closure off when the button pushes and it feels just like the other one one thing you'll notice is probably a, this one's a little bit more compact than the other one they call us the compact and actually if i set them side by side and then grab the other one out to put it away and you'll be able to see the compactness of it which is part of the uh thing that we liked about it because it definitely saves some space Again, it's the same size. No, wait, this is small. This is different dot pitch. This is a small dot pitch than this one. So there you can see them kind of side by side. So this is the one that we're going to use, and this is the, the larger one. So it is smaller dot pitch. I can't remember what it is. Is it 16 by 32 maybe for this one? I think it's half the size of this one right here. But anyways, you can see the difference in, in the compactness. So while we can do sitting there, let me show you the other one. 
which is very interesting to us. Um, again, the cost on this one's much higher than the other. And I'll stick it right there. So you see it's the same size as the other one pretty much, but the difference is this is not LCD, this is OLED. So it's full color and you can put images, pictures, whatever you want in this one. Uh, the cost of this one's like 20 some dollars more than the other than than the other ones. So um, it's a little bit cost prohibitive unless you really want to make a, a high-end board. And we definitely might look at this as, a, as an option. Again, this is a SPI, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so it's the same number of pins as uh, the compact. In fact, I believe if you look at the bottom, I think you can put one in place of the other, with the exception of there are ones a little bit wider than the other. So we could make boards that would have, you know, two different switch pins, but the same set of pins for this and different holes, and we could pretty much interchange them as long as we left space for that. So that's something we're going to look at look at doing. But this one here is full color, and this one is uh, backlit different colors. And it's, it just says this one is this one is as well. So those are the smart buttons. This one I was going to show you was one of these compact ones because that's what our boards are designed for, these compact ones. And I was going to show you that working tonight. Uh, unfortunately, the one that I have working on, th these actually go on here. So you can't really see exactly how it fits, but it basically fits like, like that. And you can put two of these on this one board. And these actually, this actually goes horizontal, like so. Just like that, and you put two these on, ding up two of these on one board, and you can can make and do things. So the one that was functioning, I took with me, and they still have, and I'll get it back um, hopefully tomorrow. So maybe for next week's show, I'll have it have it ready to go, and I can show you some of the things that we do with it because it's really neat to have a button that's dynamic like this. All right, so right now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a quick break. We'll be back in a minute or two. You work hard for your business. Your website should too. No matter what industry you're in, select your customizable high quality design with professionally written content and graphic elements created for your business. Make changes online whenever you like. Switch your background color, page layout, and text anytime. Add your pictures and logo. Upgrade your website with useful one-in-one -one web apps and integrate social media. Upload your photo albums and embed videos. With one click, optimize your website for viewing on mobile devices. Choose your free domain or you can easily transfer an existing one. Thanks to one-in-one's SEO tools, customers can find you everywhere. One-in-one -one My Website, a professional website created by you. When you open up an Audible audiobook, it opens up your imagination. Enjoy a steamy romance while ironing the sheets. Discover an historic battle while battling the bulge at the gym. Visit audible.com slash free books now to try two books absolutely free. Get caught up in a whodunit during a do-it-yourself project. Listen anytime, anywhere with the Audible mobile app. When you're out for a walk, learn how to climb the corporate ladder. Or bring a little magic to your minivan with a fantasy novel. With over 100,000 titles, Audible is an amazing experience that you can now try absolutely free. And just like our books, there's no binding. Our great listen guarantee lets you exchange a title you don't like for another. No questions asked. Visit audible.com slash free books to download two books of your choice right now. We definitely want to thank our sponsors and we had links at the bottom down there and if you didn't get them you can always go uh, back to the show notes or we also have a section on our webpage uh, that talks about um, special deals and you can go there and click on the links uh, to get the discounts and anything from the sponsors and we definitely appreciate our sponsors helping support uh, let's make it 
All right. So this past weekend, I actually on Saturday had this idea of I, I do once a, the, a month, I do uh, run sound for this kids program and it's a very, it's scripted. So we have to pay through the script, you know, when the sound effects are coming up and all that stuff. And in the past, we've always used paper and you're scrolling through the paper. The problem is you can't see what's coming up. So I had this idea of putting it into a PDF so I could just scroll up and I could kind of see when the page break was, what was coming up. It's a, and it works, that worked very well. But I didn't want to have to scroll or have my hands on the sound board all the time. So I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I originally was going to do a MIDI interface uh, from the soundboard because they're running an X32 and I could do a MIDI interface and I could use the buttons um, and then go to control and control the screen. Instead, what I end up doing is that we now have all these different button boards that we use for the broadcast things. Some of them are just shields. And I took one of those shields and attached it to an... Uh, Arduino Leonardo, which can emulate a keyboard, and I programmed it to basically be able to scroll up and down through a PDF file. So I'm going to show you that real quick. This is the board, uh, the box that I created. It's a tiny little box, uh, and actually the box is much bigger than it needs to be for the buttons because the actual shield ends like right here, um, but it was the smallest one that I had. And actually this fits if you know an X32. They have an iPhone uh, area or a phone area where you can put your iPhone and stuff. This fits right in there perfectly. So it was the perfect size to do that. And you can't, it's hard to tell, but I think it's on the light off of it. The top button's red and the bottom one's green. And that's just because this is the one that goes forward in the script. And when you push the button, it um, it goes yellow just to tell you that there's nothing, there's the buttons are pressed, either one of them, and you go either way. Now, what you don't see is on my computer, now I'm paging up and down or scrolling up and down through the program that does this. So I wanna walk through this program and we've talked about keyboard control before, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing with the color of the lights and everything as well, and, you can, and it's easily adjustable. Uh, but the other thing I want to do is when, I, when it first comes on, and you have to be, let me upload this and see if you can actually see this or not. Uh, let me get the right board. Leonardo. And I think this is the, no, I can't tell what's, what's the right board and what's not, so I'm not going to upload it. But I mean, I'm going to unplug it, and you can see what it does when it comes on. It goes through this little dance. I call it a dance. And that was just for me making sure I had the right colors and everything uh, in the programming. So I could probably take it out now. It doesn't really have any any functional things. Yeah, it's just going red, green, red, green. There's no functional reason to have that in there. Um, it was just for me when I was debugging it. So let's do this. Let's hop over to the code. All right. So I actually don't have many comments in here. Uh, originally, it wasn't intending to really put it out there in public, but I don't mind putting it out in public. So um, this button board that we have in here is one that we created for broadcast buttons for doing other tasks similar to this. Uh, we use it um, something similar to this one that's a little bit bigger to control the sound board in the studio here. So like if I have to cough or something like that, I can hit the button and it'll mute me. And then I have other things that can mute the audio subgroup of us. So that if we're running commercials, whatever, we can talk to each other. Well, commercials are running. So we have many different styles of boards now that work with both the Mega and the non-Mega series of um, Arduinos. So uh, the reason it says button one, two, and three is just like a generic thing that I fear I can use it for other things. Because there are you can do three buttons and there are about five different layouts. Uh, in this case here, it's button one and three, uh, which is like in the middle. So I could put like one and two on side by side and three in the middle or on the other side or three on top and two on the bottom. So I mean, I can mix up like about five different patterns you can use across three buttons. So you see I'm using pins two, four, and seven for these buttons. And that the reason I did that is because these other pins are, um, I can dim them by using PWM. So I wanted to reserve the PWM pins for the LEDs. So that's why it's in a weird, it's not like two, three, and four, because uh, three, for example, can do pulse width modulation. And the reason that there's no five or six is five or six can do pulse width modulation. So that's what's why it's oddly numbered like this. All right, so here we have our pins for the green and the red for button number one, the green and the red for button number two, and the green and the red for the button number three. These broadcast buttons have two LEDs. They are red and green. So there's red and green. If you turn them both on together, it makes yellow or like a yellow. And then we set uh, next pin, which I don't remember what that does. I'll figure. 
Actually, I don't think it's needed anymore. Let me look down there. It's not needed anymore. I took that out when it was done. Uh, so then we define an array of lights and that we just do button one, green and red, button two, green and red, button three, green and red. And this is just so we can loop through it nice and quickly on down here and you'll see how, why we use that. We define our pin modes, button one, two, and three as input pull up. So basically when the button is pressed, it goes to ground. So if we pull them up, it's going to be true until the button is pressed. So you got to remember when you look at the digital read, you got to say not digital read for it to be pressed. It's something important to remember. Here's why we use the array. So I could basically go through all of the different lights and set them to output. I begin the keyboard and then the startup cycle is the blinking lights that you saw. That was mainly me knowing that it was working plugged in properly and the buttons were working properly. So it was kind of like a little bit of a debug cycle in the very beginning. I could comment that out. It does not do anything functional in any way. All right, so we're gonna go down and we go into our loop and in our loop, we're going to check button number one. And if button number one is pressed, which means it's not digital read, then we turn everything on, which basically makes two yellow buttons. And we keyboard press the key up arrow. So button one is the red one, the top one. And if button one is not pressed, then we go and say, is button three pressed? And if it is, again, we turn everything yellow to say that we are going, uh, that the buttons are pressed. And we key down the uh, arrow key and if neither one is pressed then we say okay we want to send no more keys key presses and we want to turn everything off and then i want to turn red on the button number one on and i want to turn green on button number three on so basically i'm turning off all the leds for all the lights and only turning on the ones that i want at this point now here's what's going to be kind of backwards is we are putting these low to turn them on. So the reason we do that is they were using the pins as an open drain. So the way that the switches work is they have a common positive pin and two individual um, output pins or negative pins that control the LED. So to get them to turn on, we got to turn the pins low on the Arduino so that the power is drained through those pins. When they turn high, the LED turns off. So that's why you see turn all on. Uh, we actually wrote up a, a routine turn all on, which it's kind of backwards. Because if you go look at turn all on right here, we're actually turning it low, which would you think in your mind would be off. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. So then I also delay 100 milliseconds because if I didn't, it would go really fast. For me, 100 milliseconds is about right. I could probably make it a little bit shorter, uh, like maybe 80 milliseconds that would be probably about the bright scrolling, but 100 worked fine. So I'm not gonna mess with it, probably just leave it just like it is. And then we go down here to startup cycle and you just see all we're doing is we're cycling, cycling through all the different uh, pins. Oh, there's the next pin right there. So we're cycling through all the pins and just turning them on and off as we, as we go around. So we're not even looking at individual buttons, we're just looking at the actual um, light pins themselves. So you have, we had defined six different LED pins up top and we're cycling through all of them. Uh, I totally believe with 25, so we basically go through them all about four times. And we're delaying 200 milliseconds between each one. Then we turn them all on at the uh, very end. And then our turn all off and turn all on right here are uh, looping. So we have six of them. We are basically going through the loop and turning them all high. Again, high turns the LEDs off because it's using the Arduino as the drain. So if you put them high, there's nowhere to drain. And then turn all on is the exact opposite. We turn everything on by turning the pins low for all of the lights. And you can see here, we're using those arrays again, which makes it very quick to go through and do it. So we have a total of 76 lines for this whole program. Uh, very basic, very basic program. But that's what uh, I, I got this idea on Saturday and found a box and cut it open and Arduino uh, Leonardo and uh, one of our button boards soldered two buttons on it, and poof, there I have it. I had this uh, this little box right here that did everything that I needed to do. So that was my my fun of the weekend, and uh, I have some other stuff I'm still working on with these kind of button boards, and I'll bring them up here and show you. Like I said, we have something that I'm using right here as well. In addition to I have the same button, uh, different button boards, but using I2C right here, which is actually what I'm switching back and forth with. Um, let's see, you can um, you see it here? 
No, not really. Um, you can kind of see it like right here. This is what I'm using to actually squish with today. Um, and it's that same that same button board that I kind of showed you before. If I can pick it up, maybe right there. So it's using the same kind of buttons, and these are all ITC. And um, eventually, I'll go through and I'll show you how I did everything inside of it as well with the Arduino and everything. But yeah, that's the uh, same buttons we use for this. These are our 15 millimeter buttons. Um, I actually have some 17 millimeters which look even better. They're uh, we are going to start redesigning them 17 millimeter versus 15 millimeter. They just fit your fingers better, I think. Well, that's just my personal opinion. Man, I got big fat fingers. I don't know. But uh, it seems like the, the standard is typically 15 millimeter, but the 17s have a nice nicer feel to me. So I consider them more of a luxury switch. But our current designs are using 15s, and uh, we'll probably continue with 15s for most of the products. And then the, the, the larger boards will probably go to, to 17 millimeter because they're a little more expensive, have more features on them. And just the cost of going 17 millimeters is really minimal. Um, we're talking like a dollar a button, maybe something like that at most, and uh, maybe saying that much. So very, very minimal as far as how the buttons themselves go. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for this week. Let me go through the housekeeping items again. This show is recorded live every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. We'd love to have you in here. We normally have a chat room, although tonight, for some reason, it's broken, and I don't know why. So I'll have to get that uh, fixed. And uh, But we do like you come at 9 p.m. and uh, chat with us in the chat room. We'd love to have you in the chat room. Um, if you uh, want to show notes for this show, including the code that I just walked through, it'll be on our show notes at uh, TexNTV in the shortcut to get there. Uh, if you don't go, to, if you can go to Text TV and you can just click on shows, let's make it, and you can see all the episodes and everything. But a shortcut to get to there is just to let's make it that TV, and we'll take you right to where you, uh, right to where you're going to go. Also, if you are uh, on Facebook, if you go to facebookcom TV, we would definitely appreciate uh, a thumbs up and a like in there, and you know, spread it around with some of your friends at electronics and and gadgeteers and stuff like that. We'd love to, um, you know, get them in the show here as well. And uh, if you're on Twitter, you can you can always tweet us at TexNTV. Make sure you use the hashtag pound sign. Let's make it. And uh, lastly, if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. Uh, it's youtubecom slash TexNTV. However, if you're watching us uh, on downloads, we definitely like that because uh, uh, that's like a consistent thing. You don't got to worry about it. You go sign up, you subscribe. Uh, we're using iTunes, whatever you're using to watch your your podcast, uh, and it just comes down automatically. You don't have to worry about it. You can take it with you in your phone, in the car. You can take it to work on your iPad. That's what I do. I will take things to work on the iPad and sit next to me with my, put my ears in and just listen to podcasts all day long, literally all day long. And um, I definitely would appreciate that. And remember, Halloween is coming up and we want to do something for Halloween. So if you have an idea for a project for Halloween, please let us know. And we may try to work it out and get that done. If you've done a project, we'd love to see video and pictures of it. And if you're using it for our, like trick or treat night and you're scaring little kids and stuff walking by, make sure you send us some video of that too. It's be very cool to show what you can do uh, with Let's Make It type technologies, you know, like putting Arduino in a, in a pumpkin. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to do something like that uh, here and see what, see what I can do. If I can get somebody to help me carve the pumpkin or carve it for me, yeah, so that's, that's the goal. Um, the artistic part of me doesn't like doesn't do good at carving pumpkins. It looks like a really nasty pumpkin. But uh, if I can get somebody to help me carve one out, I may try to do something with an Arduino in the pumpkin and maybe you know, work out some of the some of those details as well. But I'd love to for you to help us uh, with the ideas for what you think would be good for Halloween, uh, electronic wise. So, you know, let us know. We definitely appreciate that. Hopefully, uh, Bob's back with us next week. Um, and, uh, some of his family emergency stuff's calmed down a little bit, but, uh, we do, uh, wish him well. And, and, uh, he definitely, if he needs a time to take for his family, that's most important, more important than this show, uh, ever can be. So, uh, hopefully he's back with us next week. And, if not, I'll be doing something solo again. And I should have a smart buttons by back by next week. So maybe I'll just show you what I plan on doing uh, tonight. All right. That's it for Let's Make It This Week. We'll see you all next week. For show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the TexN.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the TechZen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show.
You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.